Hello and welcome to another Ouroboros review. Today we'll be doing the Symbiote Spider-Man Premium Format, the newest one that got released this year, which is 2021. And yeah, I literally, I literally just got it. The statue is still in the box. I haven't taken it out yet because we have, uh, I need to wrap up the box and, and put it in storage. So uh, we have a little bit more space because I don't have that much space right now. So without further ado, I will get up a closer shot of the, the box, shall we? Let's do it. Alrighty, starting with the front. I would assume this is the front because you have the actual statue here. Um, the statue is a lot taller than this guy in the picture. Uh, the, the space kind of like extends down a little bit, giving quite a bit of height, which is really cool. And then you have Symbiote Spider-Man up here in this like a web kind of look. And then you have this oozy goo goop coming out. I like that they put like the little blue shine to it, which is really cool because um, that was how it was always depicted in the comics, you know? Kind of like how he is here too. And then you have Sideshow Premium Format figure down the bottom. On the side here, we have more of the goopy stuff. It's kind of coming forward, taking over, you know? Sideshow here. And at the bottom back, you have the Venom Spider. I love this spider. It's the coolest spider, especially when it's the contrast of the the really dark black and the really white white. And then you see like the symbiote stuff coming up again, kind of taking over a little bit more. It looks really cool. Same with the side here, same goopy stuff here. At the top, just symbiote Spidey. The bottom, same deal. I have gotten number 2010 out of 5,000. That is a really big number. Unfortunately, it's a bit too big, but I think this guy looks awesome, near perfect. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Alrighty, here he is in all his slim glory. Uh, I know that for me, as you can see in the back here, space is an issue. Uh, I have a whole room and I still need more space. And I think the sideshow kind of went with something slim and sleek, so like tall but thin. You know what I mean? Uh, because of that exact issue. And they did really well with this. It reminds me so much of the, that scene in Spider-Man 3 where he's um, contemplating whether to get rid of the suit on the church or whatever. And it's so well done. Uh, there's a few issues that I do have with the statue, but we'll go tackle them together. But in the meantime, let's uh, start with the base and work on- Here is the bottom part of the base and uh... Yeah, it's pretty awesome. The sculpting is really good on this guy. I couldn't really pick it apart for much when it comes to the sculpt. A few things I don't like about with the, um, you know, paintwork, but it still looks really cool. You can see it's like some sort of pillar on a chapel or whatever. You've got a, a nun on one side and a nun on the other. The only difference is one nun is clearly a skull or corpse and then the other one is complete sorry for the siren i would assume that has something to do with uh, life and death when it comes to messing around with a symbiote but yeah and then on the back here it's kind of just broken away completely it's all just hollowed out but if you look on this side you can see how indented it just goes and then you have the symbiote at the bottom slowly crawling its way up to spidey whether it's leaving him or consuming him, I would assume that consuming him, because it looks like these tendrils are coming up. And the tendrils were all, uh, you know, magnetized in with color code coded and stuff like that. Barely any seam there. They did it really nicely with like this swooping effect uh, comes from here all the way up and around. Same with this guy here. You see these layers of tendrils coming out and then here up too. This one's a little bit more noticeable because of that kind of void that just there but yeah there, there's like the the slight void just in there so it looks like it um, that something's meant to go in there truthfully you could probably have this out and no one will pay attention i had to really look hard to find this guy and yeah it's pretty nice and the, just the see the seams on this is excellent i could not ask for much more and then in the base here in the base here you can see it's all broken down you see the symbiote kind of going through it Honestly, this is where the paint comes in. Um, you can see it's there, like here and stuff like that, but the paint on it is just dreadful. It's actually going over the skull, but it kind of just blends in. It's showing better on camera than it is in person. 
that bit there really looks like crap. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't look very good. It just blends together. The fact that they put in a, another skull in there, how it's kind of just crumbled down is really cool. But if they just gloss this and maybe add a little bit more blue, it would have come across as the actual symbiote. You can, you can almost tell the, the difference between here and here. Like it's slimy here, but not here. And I don't understand that. It's as if it was an afterthought to put the gloss on it, which is very strange. But yeah, let's uh, have a closer look at these angel nun things. I actually think it's an angel. Yeah, here we have the angel area. Uh, the reason why I say I think it's an angel is because you can actually see the wings sculpted in the back there. I just realized that. But the detail in this is so nice. All this calligraphy here and, and, and just the, the wrinkles and like the rough texture just looks so nice. And the fact that the symbiote is just creeping all over it just uh, adds that extra bit of depth. And there's cracks through the crevices and everything. It's just really well done. Dry brushing this would have been so satisfying just to see all that detail emerge. And the skull angel here, the angel of death, if you will. Same kind of deal, really nicely sculpted. The best part about this statue is you can display it high and low, and the higher you display it, the more you see, such as the tendrils as well as the skull, and the, the skull angel and the normal angel. And then you have all this like green effect to it. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up. It looks more gray than anything. Let me adjust the light quickly. Even then you can't really see the, the green that well, but it is, it's actually very, very green, almost to the point of overpowering, but it, it, it works well if you think it's an old building with uh, moss growing on it. I think um, if they dialed it back just a little bit, it would have been a more effective. But yeah, you can see all the broken bits here and then the, the horribly painted tendrils going through here where it's just matte and kind of gets lost. And then you have this just random pieces of black. Hold on, I'll show you what I mean. Like the other tendrils that actually look like they've been dry brushed properly, but this is just this very, very dark, just straight up black. And then like a gray blue, you know, pale blue, if you will. Not really pale blue, just a matte blue, which is very disappointing, but it's the back of it and I'm kind of okay with it. Moving on up. Alrighty, here we have the top area and yeah, it looks great. It's um, I think it's a better area out of the lot um, Purely because of like just the detail with these little filigree bits and then the, the pillars as well as the perch it just looks great and um, It came in a few pieces most of them were little add-ons by via magnet but yeah, this, there wasn't much in the box. Uh, most of it came all intact. Um, the pillar broke off into two sections, not including all the side add-ons, which was mostly the symbiotes and these little pillars here, which is um, really nice. The seam line is pretty much non-existent as it's cut off right where it's meant to connect. And it looks really good. It looks like uh, some sort of chapel in, um, in New York somewhere, you know? The top part here comes off. You can just see the seam line there, but it's very minimal. I'm very happy with that, uh, especially considering it's only on the back and where you will be viewing him is mostly from an angle of this or this. So you don't really see it that much, which is great. And you can kind of see the symbiote crawling up and going into where Peter Parker's foot is, you know? Looks great. Uh, it, it matches really nicely. The rock is done really well. Um, you can more so see the green up the top here rather than the bottom areas where I was trying to show you before, especially with um, in this section here and over here. But it looks really good. Uh, you can see Spider-Man's foot there and at the top there too. But yeah, let's uh, get into the main attraction here, shall we? I'll tell you what, again, the angles of this, this guy is, is, is always something to look at, but it makes it really difficult to record. Uh, but yeah, look at this back. It looks awesome. You can see his spine through there and all the musculature all over the place. There's a little bit of shading on the spider. A lot of the time, I dislike the way the spider looks. Like Even on my life-size bus, it looks a little bit weird. Um, but I think this is probably one of the better looking ones where it's, it's pretty much spot on. I think it looks awesome. I think it looks really good. You can see the the texture and the just the the definition of his muscles looks. He's a he's a regular beefcake, you know, uh, even more so than most Spider-Man statues that you see. But it just looks awesome. It looks really really cool. 
very well done, very nice attention to detail. And as we come across here, you can see more of that kind of lumpy, veiny work through the symbiote. And you can really tell the difference between the symbiote vein and then the vein that he actually has in his arms, which we'll get to um, a little later. But yeah, it just looks really cool, hunched over like that. Uh, you can see here where it's a little bit more like a tealy blue than uh, just straight up blue. But the, mus the muscles look really good, well defined. Alrighty, here we have the slightly lower version. And uh, this is what I meant by, you can see like the, the sculpted vein here, a little bit more defined than the, the symbiote vein. It's slightly more protruding and a little smoother, which is really cool. But it looks really cool. You can see the veins in his hands too, some of the tendons. And uh, yeah, the, the positioning of the foot look is really nice. The, the almost seamless hand and feet on this pedestal is, is perfect, or I would say near perfect. You see more of the muscle defi definition in his thighs and, and calves and his, his ass. It's always weird how like the, the, the muscle definition is so well defined and then with the blue and the black and then when you come to his ass it's just completely black <laughs> it kind of looks strange <laughs> but yeah just the, the the muscles in his his legs are just awesome and uh yeah it just looks great um the fingers look good the feet look good everything is just so well done on this uh, and the best part about this statue is it's completely seamless or nearly completely seamless besides the the seams on um, his his hands, which is very, very minimalistic. But yeah, his hand is pretty much seamless, so is his foot. Uh, this entire statue is pretty much seamless. I would say it's 95% seamless. And Spidey himself is... Seamless. There is no seams on him at all, which is fucking awesome. I cannot stress how frustrating it is to have a nasty seam on a statue. Uh, they are getting better with it, but this guy, I uh, really knocked it out of the park. I'm so happy about that. You can also see some tendons and stuff on, on his foot here, which looks really cool. You know, for some such a simplistic figure, it's very complicated to try and record him. I have a bright light right on him, but he still seems so dark, uh, which is really cool for this uh, statue, considering that he is meant to be quite dark, considering he has a black suit. <laughs> very cool love the pose and it's just so menacing like uh you can have him on this angle or front on like this depending on how you want it but the shading is so well done as well as the the blue is just the right amount again even with so much light on him he's he doesn't have that much showing which is really cool the only thing that i have to say is the blue is it has a sort of green tint Almost kind of a, a more blue teal than, than anything else. Um, but it's very, it's not really noticeable. You can notice it on the top of his head and his shoulders a lot more. Uh, the camera's not picking it up all that much, but it definitely is there. But again, it's not overly powering. So I think he's painted extremely well. And he has that same kind of rough texture that the Spider-Man in the back here has. Uh, you can see on the top with the shine of his head there where it seems like they airbrushed a little bit of a uh, texture in there which looks awesome because it's meant to be an organic suit and you can see that he has um his web little hole there on both hands my fiance was what the hell is that and i said that's where his web comes out of and i was surprised that she doesn't know uh so this one is more of a teal kind of shading rather than a bright blue uh similar to this one, but this one has more of a dark, deep blue, oceanic blue than, than this one does. Uh, but yeah, you can see his eyes are nicely shaded um, and we'll get, a, we'll get a close up of his face here. Alrighty, here we have the head sculpt and it is really cool. I don't necessarily love it. I think the other one in the back here uh, is a bit better, uh, but it's hard to, the, the, the thing that I like to do when it comes to mask characters is kind of imagine what they look like underneath the mask and in this situation his jawline is so protruding and this like dip inwards 
is so pronounced that it's meant to make him look a little bit more vicious and, and like evil. I understand that, but in this situation, um, in my personal preference, I think it's a, a bit too much. The eyes look awesome. The frown looks really cool. When you put it side on like this, it's a little too flat. You can really see the definition between the ear, the jaw and the nose that it's, it, it's a bit much. But at the same time, it's, it's not killing it, which is really good. I'm really happy with that. And yeah, like that's one of my only downfalls about it. And then you can also see the textures that I mentioned before. It almost looks like vein work, you know? But yeah, I just love this pose. Skulky and creepy and, and, and imposing as well, as well as like super. It just describes the Venom symbiote on Spider-Man very well, I think. It has him so evil, I guess, compared to what Spider-Man normally is. And um, yeah. Looks good. Uh, the muscle definition on his arms is really good. Kind of looks like my arms, you know, pretty, pretty big and bulky and, and muscular. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Alrighty, so lighting on this guy, right? So I turned the back lights off to try and get more definition out of just this one character. But this is a light from the top, yeah? This is a light front on and then from the bottom. There is no bad angles on this guy almost. And then the same with on like a slightly different side. Top, middle, and bottom. It just looks really good. Um, I think bottom and just on top look the best. But yeah, there's just a lot going on for such a small statue. And that's kind of what you want, you know? You want a slightly petite statue, but one that really commands a lot of presence and this is definitely that guy like even even a, a very side on view makes him look dark and menacing just looks amazing very very cool uh, unfortunately he doesn't scale very well with uh, statues that you see in the back um, purely because he's obviously a different different line but um, he's just a little bit overscaled. He might scale well with Carnage and Venom, but not the symbiote Spider-Man in the back there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's about it, really. So thanks everyone for tuning into my video today. Uh, l let me know what you guys think of this. Um, um, yeah, let me know which one you guys prefer, this one or uh, this guy back here. Uh, I, it's tough. Uh, I have personal uh, connections with this guy back here. I actually got it signed by Stan Lee. A video coming up soon. Um, but this one, I generally think is better than that one. Um, I love the dynamic pose of that one but this one just screams symbiote spider-man as well as that one came out with a with two versions uh normal spider-man and a uh, symbiote spider-man so that's a little bit of a letdown in my personal opinion purely because um i wanted both but because they were the same pose i was just like you know what i'm not overly fond of having two of the same statue even though they're completely different but yeah, I, I think this guy is very good, very imposing, and I, with all the customs out there as well, I think he's still one of the better ones. Um, fight me on it. I'm willing to. Let's go. <laughs> but um, what I mean is like this is this is definitely probably one of my favorite. No, you know what? This is probably my favorite pose and statue of Symbiote Spider-Man. There's a few other customs that I really like, but I don't go with customs all, all that much anymore. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. As well as thank you to my subscribers, Kay Helson, uh, Webslinger91, and Amy, my newest um, 
Patreon member. Uh, if you guys want to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, you know, all that jazz. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys.